Welcome to Brainish English Stories. When he left, he took her memory with him, frozen in his mind. He often stood beside her, looking at her calmly sitting, and would say, "I don't get how you stay so still." He'd add, "It amazes me how you find happiness in just being still." I can't do that. I'm always moving, even if I'm exhausted. I'm like the girl in the red shoes who couldn't stop dancing until she fell. She would smile at him, shaking her head from her sofa, and he'd say, "I wish I had your gift, being happily still, thinking calmly." One day, he looked at her deeply and said. You're the most restful person I know. He left because he had to. She was married, and he was not. Staying would have been wrong, so he left. When she was finally free, though, he still stayed away, maybe fearing the pain of returning. But deep down, he knew he would come back. So. One day, with a strong feeling and sudden decision, he came back eagerly. When he left, she had been recovering from a long illness, finding peace in her books, her quiet room, and the garden view. Her friends visited her, and eventually, so did he, filling her room with happiness each time he came. During his visits, she enjoyed every moment of her quiet life, feeling complete and at peace. She stayed very still, holding on to her happiness and hoping it would never end. She believed somehow that this time, their time together, wouldn't end. But of course, it did. At first. People called her a widow, though her heart was still waiting for him. She stayed in the old room, certain he would come. She had done her duty to the one who stood between them, and saying goodbye to that part of her life had hurt deeply. Weak from sadness, she fell ill, then slowly began to recover. She was filled with hope. Waiting for him, feeling his presence would bring her joy. As she recovered, she held on to her memories of him, sure he would come soon. She felt no regret and believed in their love, knowing it had stayed pure. Waiting for their reunion, she felt the pain of waiting would disappear when he finally arrived. Months passed, and finally, just as her hope was fading, he came. On his way to her, he imagined her face, her soft, calm beauty. He pictured her with a little gray in her hair, dressed in soft colors, looking as serene as ever. She was his haven, and he longed for the rest she would bring him. He knew she would show him how to be calm and still, and he hurried across the world, eager for her peace. At her door, he was immediately led to the familiar room upstairs, expecting to find her there. But he learned she wasn't home and had left no message. The maid told him she would be back soon, so with hope. He chose to wait. He decided to wait a bit impatiently. It seemed silly now, expecting her to be home without any warning after all these years. He hadn't wanted to wait, even though he knew he should have written first. He'd imagined this meeting so many times, picturing her waiting for him at home, and this room. As he looked around, something felt different. 
It didn't look like the room he remembered. He walked back and forth, glancing at the garden outside, less tidy now, as if it had been left without care. He turned back to the room, confused. He closed his eyes and pictured it as it had been. White walls, blue curtains, his chair by her sofa, the small table always holding his roses. There were books, the little gold clock ticking gently, and everything showed her simple, quiet spirit. But this room, the sofa was pushed aside, replaced by a large desk covered with papers, a typewriter, and cigarette butts. Dust lined the shelves and mantel. The familiar things were almost hidden under papers, notebooks, and things she never used before. Notices on the mirror announced meetings. And he realized this was now a place for politics or some kind of work he didn't understand. Her quiet room had been a place of calm, and it felt strange to see it changed. Yet he couldn't leave; he had come too far. Maybe she'd let someone else use her room for a time. He smiled, thinking she wouldn't do it again. Then the door opened, and there she was, rushing in, hands stretched out to him. He took her hands and then let them go. When he could stop her greeting, he said, forcing himself to speak, "So, you are strong and busy now." She told him about how busy she was. She told him how, but not why. She had awakened from her long, quiet dream. She said she had found, though a bit late, but not too late, the happiness of being active, of working all the time for the good of the world. Do you remember how you used to say you couldn't sit still? I am like that now. And he listened, every word going deeper into his heart. Hurting him more and more. Of all the things he had done since they last met, he had nothing to say. After just letting her talk, oh, how she talked! He left as soon as he politely could. He had come to tell her so much, but he hadn't said a single word. Tired, so terribly tired, he had come looking for peace. And now he found there was no peaceful place for him anywhere. Yes, he had come across the world to find that he was too late. He went out as soon as he could, carrying only a new image of her that, in just sixty busy minutes, had erased the picture he had kept of her for so many years. Sixty minutes, after waiting for years. She had kept him for just one hour, holding him there, forcing herself to keep him, even though he felt too shocked at first to resist or leave. Then finally, he left that room and left her behind. For years, he had imagined her sitting quietly as no other woman could, calm and graceful. Her hair going a little gray above her clear, pale skin, her eyes like those of a saint, and now he would have to picture her as restless and lively, full of ideas—ideas ideas he knew would lead to nothing, for changing the world, bringing even more unrest. And now he would have to picture her with gray hair covered by dye. And make up on her once beautiful face. At first, he had wanted to hold her in his arms, to calm her with his strength, to wipe away the makeup with his tears. But he couldn't. He just couldn't. He knew he had been living in a sweet dream, 
and to wake up from it hurt more than he could hide. He knew that you can't go back to a dream once you have woken up. So he left. He never knew, with the door closed behind him, how she had fallen on her sofa, her energy gone, her heart broken. He never knew that, thinking she had failed to draw him to her as she was, she had tried to copy him instead. He did not know how love can be clumsy when love is desperate.